Okay. Okay, okay. repeat that whole thing again. <laughs> yes, I know. But okay. I Run that over again. Right? Yes. Uh -huh. Good morning, everyone, or good Hi. evening yes. for, for those of you, those of you in Asia, and mid afternoon for those of you in Europe. Anyway, uh, well, this is another one of our Tuesday interviews with our leaders worldwide, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and today we are very happy to have with us Serena, Serena. Tan. Yes. And uh, who is a three-time TE? I don't dare call the other names. I don't know what they are anymore. Presidential director. <laughs> We've been in this business for thirty some years, and I'm confused about the titles. So something's not something wrong with something me. Something wrong with you. Yes. yes. And <laughs> circle of excellence one. Okay. So now, Serena, tell us something about yourself. Hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Pat and Margaret Lausu for inviting me to this global platform. Um, I, I was surprised because, because you know, uh, Pat and Margaret, they have such a big, big global network and they have more than 300 uh, million year circle members in uh, three, more than 300 of them worldwide. So I thought they are 52 weeks per year. So it would take like six years for them to finish interviewing every one of them. And then by that time, they would have another thousands of millennials in their group. So I thought it would take a long time before they would come and interview me. <laughs> so it was, it was, um, yeah, uh, it was, uh, it was such an honor. So hello everyone. Um, I'm Serena. Uh, I was born in Myanmar, Burma. So yeah. quite quite near to the Thailand, Philippines, like that. So I like I like Thai food. I like um, Southeast Southeast Asian food a lot. Yeah, Thai. So um, I moved to Hong Kong when I was six with my family. So actually, my parents' decision of moving from Myanmar to Hong Kong uh, really make a make big difference in my life. So I received uh, excellent education in Hong Kong. I studied Mandarin. Uh, while I was in primary school and then went to a very good um, English teaching girls secondary school in Hong Kong and was able to study in the United States for my um, undergraduate degree uh, in molecular biology. Yeah, so at that time I was planning to become a medical doctor just like my mother, but uh, while I was, um, you know, doing in my college years, I also volunteered in the teaching hospitals there. So when I was uh, helping out as a volunteer in the emergency room, I saw lots of patients who can actually avoid themselves being in that position if they have better taken, if they have taken their health uh, in a better way. So I, I was talking to myself whether I really want to be committed in an environment of resuscitating people or treating diseases uh, after people had got the diseases, or I really want to, or what, what deep down in my heart is I want to do something related to health, is to keep people healthy, not to treat those um, sicknesses, you know? So anyway, anyway, after I finished my undergraduate degree, uh, I came back to Hong Kong and I met um, a very talented businessman. So the next day I became his assistant. So because of him, because he was smart and then he was visionary, um, the whole business world was open to me because before I didn't know, I, I didn't believe that I, be, I belonged to the business world. I was a pure science person, you know, I never thought of being in the business world. But um, this person, uh, this first mentor in my life, he has really changed my mind. So after working there for two months, I really decided that business is indeed my career path for the future instead of um, pursuing the medical school. So um, very shortly, I became the, the someone who in charge of the business development of the company. So he said, as you came back from the US, why don't you um, open up the US market for me? So I was the business development manager for this uh, manufacturing company, which owns a big production plant in, uh, in, in back in China. So I flew to United States very often on a monthly basis at that time until I had my first child. So that was my story before I joined this team. Ah, 
Well, that's interesting. You learn Mandarin too in Hong Kong? Yes, that school was actually one of the first school which was which uh, teaches in um, two two dialects. You know, they use Mandarin. They, they still use Mandarin to teach. Yes. Really? Yes. Because when I went to high school or primary school and uh, high school in Hong Kong, they also had lessons in Mandarin. Yeah. Okay. Except we took it as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> But for that school, everything was taught in Mandarin. So Mandarin was actually my first language. I still talk to my mother and uh, my, my father in Mandarin nowadays. No wonder you can speak Mandarin so, so, so well. fluently. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Because not, we were forced to. <laughs> not like me, okay? Perfect Cantonese Mandarin. So. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Pat with such a heavy accent, as soon as he talks, people say, oh, you're from Hong Kong. <laughs> You're Cantonese. Yes, by the way, our beloved Pat was from Hong Kong. Yeah. So how did you run into New Skin? So you're very happy with your job, but then you have a child, then, then what? What happened? Yeah, um, I really enjoyed my job um, as, a, as a single person at that time. So, and then shortly I got married with someone who met back in Austin, uh, my beloved uh, husband. So, um, and then the next year we had our first child. So actually, you know what, since ever since I'm a, once I got married, actually my boss called me to his room, to his office room and then asked, Serena, actually, what is your family planning? So he was already thinking whether, whether, whether this person can still fly for him that often or not. He, he was smart enough to you know vision mm. that. But mm. for me, I thought, well, my mom was a working mother and she raised up four kids. So I thought I can be a career mom, you know, at the same time raising my kids. I thought I could do that. So um, I gave birth to my son and then have a maternal leave and then went back to office. So for the first week, I was bombarded with the same kind of uh, workload and stuff like that. Um, came home very late at night and then my son was already sleeping. And then the next day when I went to work, he was still sleeping. So for one whole week, I really haven't really had a chance to really be with my baby. So at the end of that week, that's it. So I went to well, I went into my, my boss office and told him, boss, I decided to work part time for you. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, that's everything, uh, that's where the story starts. So I knew that um, as a part-time person, I, that means I'm not, I wasn't really willing to fly that much. Um, or in fact, I don't want to fly anymore. Um, and then um, my career path in that company will be very limited because in the, in the morning time, they might have a meeting. They will be asking, so Serena, are you showing, are you coming tomorrow morning or, or still in the afternoon? So I know, I know my whole career path will be, um, will, be, will be very difficult. So at that time, um, as a mom, as a very young mom, I was also thinking about the long-term um, financial security of the, of the whole family. You know, as a mom or as a single person, the, the, the thinking is different. As a mom, we, 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 we think more of a long-term things. And at that time, I also um, have been working for like three and a half years. So I knew what an employee is like. So that means we work and work and work. But no matter how hard we work, it's just a piece of salary. It's just a salary that we get. It's not that the more I work, the more I can get, and then I can fulfill the financial need that I, I want to have a different kind of life. I, I don't really see that because um, the more I climb up the corporate ladder, the more busier I'm going to become, right? Um, mm -hmm. The less time I have, even though I might have better income, but I won't have the time to enjoy it with my family. So it's really not the kind of um, lifestyle that I want. And then also at that time, my mom got retired. Uh, she, she was 60, she got retired. So um, she was a medical doctor. 
she has very high pay. Um, but after working for like 30 something years, she got that high pay, right? But so for her retirement, it's okay, even though if she go to the bank and, you know, try to see the monthly income, no, that would be no more monthly income after she got retired. So I started to um, visualize my own retirement. Serena, what's going to happen when you get retired? Mm. Um, and then nowadays, people live so long. My grandfather was born in 1900, and he lived through 1992. So um, I, I think my <laughs> life span could be quite long as well, you know. Uh, Hong Kong, in fact, has the longest lifespan uh, in the whole world. Yeah. Wow. So if, if I unfortunately got retired at 60, uh, I still have another 40 years to go. So I don't think I can solve the financial uh, need that I will face after retirement with a normal salary based career. So I, I started to think differently at that time. Yeah. So I think it's the moment um, I have come to a moment of my time. Um, come to a cross session and thinking about my future is just the right timing, I think. So, but at that time, I have no idea where I should go because I wasn't trained in the business world. Um, I have just worked for like three and a half years. I definitely won't start a business myself because I saw that to be a business owner is such a headache. Even though you might have good business, you still have lots of headache. Yeah, the painkiller is like candies for him. So I do not want to own my own, own business, um, but I, I really need to find something else. So something else. So I started to attend some seminars, you know, attend some um, short courses, just want to um, um, enlighten myself. So at that time, I I met my my sponsor, uh, my offline sponsor, um, Fred. Uh, he's also a, a team elite and circle of excellence one. Uh, he is actually a, a construction business owner, but he was very humble. He was very kind. So I was attracted to his personality. I said, Fred, you're so kind. I, I met him in one of those trainings. Um, and then after a month, he called me out. Hey, Serena, I would like to introduce my wife to you. And then maybe we can chat a little bit. So I happily accepted. And then during that lunch, they, they tried to talk to me and understand me. And then I really appreciate them because the way they talk to me is just like parents talking to, you know, parents talking to their beloved kid. Uh, they try to sort out what I was thinking, what I was confused, and and what I really need at that point of my life, and how can I plan for my future. So so that lunch was was really a turning point in my life. So at that time they introduced to me. That he said, because both of them are in the construction business. And then they said construction business is not always going to be so good, right? So I think this man is different. He has a sense of crisis. That's exactly what I have, but I don't know how to solve it. So, and then they said, there's an entrepreneur, uh, a lady entrepreneur. She is very successful in, in, her, in her business but she's willing to teach, she's willing to coach, she's willing to share what she has. So I said, and then many, many people from different walks of life has approached her and then has transited very well. So I thought if I could meet uh, her man, his mentor, maybe I can find a way out. So that's how I got to one of the new skin seminars. And then that day was, was the turning point of my life. I got to see the real picture of new skin instead of those that I thought I know new skin. You know, I that was like the fourth time I came across new skin, actually. <laughs> it's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't appreciate new skin because they have so little information about new skin and they made a conclusion already. Yes. It's just very sad. I mean, I wish every people would pay a little bit more attention or talk to people like you, so, you know, very doing very well in the business and find out what this is truly involves, especially you now you've been you've 
seeing your mom being a medical doctor, right? Getting a yeah, good life. Yeah. And then what happens when she retires? You're the, oh, oh, wait a minute. No. And then you, you're exposed to a busy world. Look at your boss, right? Painkillers yeah. galore. <laughs> Who wants that, right? It sounds good. I own my own business. Yeah. But who, who owns whom, really, if you think about it? I think most of the time, especially when you have a small business or even a big business, the business owns you. You have no time to do anything else. Seriously. That's, it's really not easy. It's really not easy, especially if you have a manufacturing plant, e even a scientific park. I mean, wow, the, the bigger it is, the, the bigger burden you have. It's a headache. Yes. Yeah. And then interesting, you miss your baby too, right? For the first, well, after a week, you haven't held your baby. <laughs> I didn't even discuss with my husband, you know? I just told my boss right away, I want to work part-time. <laughs> yeah. But, but that time didn't last long. After eight months, he started to ask me again, Serena, so when are you planning to fly again? <laughs> so uh -huh. I knew to find some way out. Yeah, if, if I want to stay there, I have to fly because that's the post, that's the part that maybe I, I can do the, the best. Um, he, he saw my potential. So, but if I want to stay in that company, I just have to live with that kind of style of my life. So it's either take it or leave it. I mean, don't complain. If you like your job, do it. But if you don't like it, just don't complain. Just find some way out, I think. Mm. So your way out, as it turned out, is new skin. Yes, unbelievable, unbelievable. You know why? Because when I was in high school, um, actually, um, I think someone from U.S. sent a, 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 a bottle of maybe rejuvenating cream or moisture restore to my mom in Hong Kong. So I saw that cream in my mother's toilet. I said, mom, what is this? that it's all plain white and I have never heard of this name on the advertisement on TV. Don't even use that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I right. Thing, you know? Yeah. Well, so that's that, was it. that was it. You know, at that time, if my mom didn't, didn't listen to me or, 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 or that person who sent that cream to her, you know, really follow up. Maybe, maybe she could be one of you. <laughs> well, that's that that'll teach you whoever that person is a lesson, right? Always follow up. Just don't give it away and then disappear. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Hmm. So what did you do after you joined New Skin? You must work hard to build your business. Yes especially the first year, it was like crazy, uh, but I enjoyed it a lot. Um, my new skin journey wasn't a very smooth one. I think no one's new skin journey is a smooth one, right? That's yeah. And I never expected it to be an easy and smooth one, in fact. So, so it was okay for me because um, the reason why I joined is because of the people. The, the people in that in that conference room really changed my mind. You know, some highly qualified people, very professional people, um, um, director of listed company, um, lots of professionals, they are there. And then I said, Serena, who are you? You're just a tiny little potato of no, I'm not a professional of any kind, you know, I'm just a graduate. You know, so so I, I said, humble to yourself, be humble and open your mind and listen to them. You know, maybe maybe you have missed out something. There must be something that all these high paid people are so committed, so attentive, taking notes, amazing. So, so um, I think being open-minded is really important. So that, that group of people really changed my view on new skin. And then, um, because I was also searching for things. So timing is important too. So maybe today you talk to your friend and then she said, no, thank you. But the next year, maybe it's the right timing for her, you know? Um, so after I joined, um, 
I was still a very busy working mom, you know, still working for that company mm -hmm. and still have a very young baby at home. Um, but I told myself, my son is going to sleep at 9.30. So why don't I utilize those little bit of time after work to learn more, to do more, you know, while he was still young. So I decided to, to you know, after, after my colleagues get off from the work, they went home. But I get up from the work, I went to New Skin. So this is my decision. I think we, we have to give give up something to give to take in something, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but my first year was a very bumpy one because at that time the Hong Kong's economy was really good. So people jump from post to post is like and then after they jump they can get a couple thousand more Hong Kong dollars. You know, the the the, the job environment is, was so good and the stocks was like raising and the housing was like so good. Uh, people don't feel that they need a second career. So I talked to a lot of people. Uh, first of all, I have very limited name list because um, I have only attended primary school and secondary school in Hong Kong. I didn't have any outside friends besides my family friends. I didn't go out with my classmates. So I was a very homebound person. So, and then I went to US for four and a half years and then came back and then fully devoted in my work. So I didn't have much time to make any new friends. Mm. So I started with my mom and dad, with my sister and brother-in-law, uh, my, 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 uh, my high school friend, and um, a friend that I knew from another company, something like that. So I have very limited human resources. Um, but anyway, none of them I thought will, will limit me from developing new skills. So I think it's someone's determination, which is most important. So, um, but new skin gave me a lot of motivation to, you know, connect, get connected with my relatives, with my friends. I started to call them. I started to arrange some lunch appointments or um, really squeeze my work so that I can really you know, get up from work earlier so that I can meet another friend after work. And then I utilize my weekends. So at that time, my family members complained, Serena, where are your weekends? Where's your Sunday? You're working on Sundays. But I knew that um, in order to create something great, I have to sacrifice in the beginning. I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but that's... at that time, I, I brought in quite a lot of people, but very few of them stay behind. Yeah, but it was a very good training for me. I would say it was an excellent training for me. So at the end of the first year, I became goal executive. That means after working for one whole year, I eventually found one person to be my partner and who is committed. But that was well, an excellent training for me. Well, yeah. That's good, actually. You know, if you come in and it's smooth sailing, say, hey, this is so easy, you know. Hmm. But now you've gone through a lot of you know, hard work and then you really appreciate the business, right? Yeah. With effort because, to put in. Yeah, at that time, uh, Lassi, do you remember? Uh, the next, the second year of my joining New Skin is the year 2000, is when Singapore markets was opened. And I met you, both of you over there in Singapore. Yeah. Wow. And um, re I remember that because Hong Kong wasn't an easy market for me, um, I think um, it's just not easy for me. So I was, I was interested in the new market. I said, hey, why don't I fly over there and see what is a new market like? What is a new market? That means none of, none of the people has joined New Skin, you know? So mm -hmm. it's a brand new market. So. Uh, I was asking around, hey, mom, do you have any friends in, in Singapore? And then I looked through my name cards. I, I actually um, resigned from my first job after one and a half years in, in New Skin, but I still cannot afford to be full-time in New Skin. So I went to another job. You know, anyway, I, I, I found out some name cards uh, that, that is connected with Singapore anyway. So I started to call them up. Say, hey, Raymond, this is Serena from blah, blah, blah. 
and then um, I'm now involved with, in the in the business, and then I'm developing the I'm trying to develop the Singapore market, and I'm flying to Singapore next week, and I come and meet you. So, so he said, okay, okay, come over. So, so just a couple of friends from the name cards that I flew over to Singapore, but um, unfortunately, because of all the hardships, you know, all the training. Uh, all the experience that I got from the first and a half years, I was able to be there, even though even though for the first month it was just by myself. Um, I was doing the POM all by myself, trying the product testing, doing the closing, you know, warming up friends, and then follow everything by myself. It's, I was just a gold executive. So I was great, great enough to, to, be, to do that. So I think smooth selling won't give me that. So embrace hardships, I would say. So it was exciting. I know. Did it, right? When I you know. first started in Hong Kong. Yeah, when uh, when we first went, you know, Hong Kong, right around 1991. 90, 90, 90, I was a lapis, between lapis and ruby, you know, up and down, <laughs> and cha cha. I call the cha cha dance, and then that's when we went to Hong Kong. And then I couldn't speak Cantonese. I was using English and then my Mandarin wasn't that great either. It was okay. So, you know, I fool around. When I went to Taiwan one time, I remember somebody pointed at me and says, if you don't speak Chinese, if you don't speak Mandarin, you shouldn't come here. And don't I go, come. <laughs> anyway. But anyway, anyway. Yeah. Okay. So you went to Singapore, then what happened? And then, um, and then, and then actually, when I started New Skin, I, I, I haven't met my mentor, uh, Jacqueline now, so Jacqueline Jen. Yeah, she's now a $10 million server audit. And then while I was in Singapore, my my sponsor, Fred and Carol, they got connected with Jacqueline now. So, so I met her the first for the first time in Singapore, in fact. And then at that time, I, I developed a lot of Chinese Chinese people. They, they were like um, adult students in Singapore. So they study in that school. Uh, I, I, I talked to the owner of the school. That, that's where I got the name card. And then he said, well, I have the whole school. I'm busy, but I have the whole school. You can talk to my, my students. <laughs> so he gave me a classroom. You can use this classroom. And then so I put on a poster and do my own POM anyway. So a lady, a very young lady, came in the first day and then came in the second day. So that was her. So I tried to develop that line and, and then introduce all of them to Jack and Lao And then at that time also uh, Mrs. Real Waters and Benny Lao Su, they also came to Singapore to support. So at that time it was exciting. Oh my goodness, the, the assembly was like more than a thousand people. Yeah, <sighs> it, it was a very exciting uh, grand opening of the Singapore market. So, yeah, and then the next year, uh, we tried to develop the Malaysian market. So, mm. also very appreciate of, um, I, I really thank both of you for supporting me. You know, you went to Kuching? Yes, <gasps> I was about to ask you, you know. Yeah. You I went all the way to my, to my partner's home to help me talk to them. Amazing, oh, amazing. Yeah, and then, and then I was joking to you. You were joking to me. Hey, Serena, how many levels are they under me, underneath me or something like that? We were just joking. I said, they should be like the 10th level under you. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but you never, you never care about the levels. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a, it, Kuching is an interesting place. You know, the hotel we stayed in usually we usually stayed in is right on the river and you can watch you know, this little tiny ferry boats, I guess, crossing the river. It's a really nice place. Kuching. Is that how we brought the kids to? No, they never went to Kuching. We, no, Kuching. They, okay. they went to Kuala Lumpur with us one time. Yeah, but we went somewhere on the uh, east side of... Uh, Kota, Kinta, Kinta Kota Palu. Okay. We went okay. with Stephen one time. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so yeah, 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 that's interesting. And yeah, I mean, they took us, they took me to lunch too. It was a very good lunch. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so, so with the new skin business, we can really travel around, make some new friends from all over the world, you know, and also learn the culture over there. It, it's a really fun business. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And so then what, what else happened? I think your mom is a, your mom supports you a yes, lot. Yes, my mom is a good story. My mom was the first person to, to really scold me for doing new skin. Yeah, she, she objected me so seriously for doing new skin. And the reason being, um, I was already very busy. And then at that time, I had this allergic asthma, very serious allergic asthma that I got from Texas, Austin. Um, yeah. when, I, when I lived in Hong Kong, I, I couldn't, um, I got this coughing all, all throughout the whole month, I would say. So she, she was very serious concerned my, about my health. I didn't get enough rest. And then I still have a baby to take care. So blah, blah, blah. As a mom, she, she just worried about me. And then, well, and then you, you, you already do not have enough time. And then now you, are said, you, you said that you want to be involved in the business. So, and then I was so committed. So um, anyway, but I talked to my mom. I said, well, these are all very positive um, people. And then, and then they are highly qualified and then they are very successful and then they are willing to train up your daughter. So let me go and learn from them. So she had that. So she had, she had no way to object this. You know, I, I need to learn. I need to, you know, have personal growth. I need to learn something. So I was th thinking about whether I should take the MBA or whether I should change my job. I was looking for my future. So I thought these people can really teach me something. But I think um, being a good testimony is really important. At that time, I used to have lots of pimples. Um, and then allergic asthma, but just after three weeks of using this new skin products, my colleagues started to, you know, notice and then ask so directly, hey, Serena, what happened to your skin? Every day when you came to the office, it keeps on changing. <laughs> so wow. it's just low, yeah. And all the pimples and the scars, they, they just disappear so quickly. And then um, every... Um, on, on every Sunday, we went back to my mom's place for, for dinner. And then she saw my face and then she said, oh, Serena, what's happening to your face? You're, it's really changing. And then after three months, she surrendered. Because she said, Serena, you haven't <laughs> been coughing for three whole months. You haven't been asking for antibiotics for three whole months. Your products really work. So this is a very strong evidence. And this is a changing point of my, of, of, for my mom. Because um, as a medical doctor, she didn't believe in any supplements, not at all. For 40 years, she objected to these supplements, but she has very serious rhinitis. She has migraine. She has high cholesterol. Uh, she has low back pain, you know, uh, even though she exercised every, every morning and she ate healthy, but she still had all these things. Um, so after three months of observing me, she, she really surrendered to new skin. She said the products really work. And then at that time, um, we have scientists flew over from US to Hong Kong. So I invited my mom. I said, well, you have got retired. And then, but you have all these medical knowledge. And, but when you went to the medical school, you didn't have the DNA, you didn't have anti-aging, you know, you didn't have <laughs> preventive health, hey, antioxidants, something like that. So, so why don't you come and learn some new things and expand your horizon, you know, meet some new friends, not just those doctors and nursing, nurses, officers, you know, you can, you can meet so many friends. And then there's one important thing. She said, hey, daughter, you became a much happier person. Yeah, because of the team, because of the business, because of the future that I can see, uh, I became a happier person. So that that really made her curious. So she came. And you cannot put a price on that being happy. Yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Well, in the past, I was just very stressful. You know, so when I went to home late, I just want to have a bowl of rice and just go to bed. I don't want to talk to any of my family members. 
So if you have a career like that, it's not healthy. It's not healthy for you. It's not healthy for your family. Yeah. Mm. There are choices out there. Well, there's one thing you have shown us here is when you use the products faithfully, you become a walking billboard for the products. Yeah. That's what it is, isn't it? Walking advertisement. Yeah. Or in Hong Kong, it's advertisement, right? <laughs> yeah, and see, and that converted your mom, you know. Exactly, so. and then and then you know she is a very serious person, so she had this cholesterol problem, right? So she went to have a medical checkup, have all her cholesterol levels scored or marked down, and then she started to take our supplements, especially the cholestine and the mm -hmm. optimum omega and light pack tea green like that. And then after three months, and then every day, every afternoon, she came to uh, New Skin office to read those medical, uh, to the, the clinical studies. At that time, New Skin put booklets and booklets of the clinical studies there. She just sat down and read them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So after three months of taking the supplements, she took another blood test, okay, to check her cholesterol level, and it was excellent. The HD, the HDL went up. The LDL went down, the triglyceride went down, and then without any side effects. So after that, she became full time in music with me. <laughs> wow. Then we went to Singapore together. We went to the US convention together. Uh, we went to um, some of the team elite trips at the Bahamas. Yeah, we went to Bahamas together. And at that time, uh, my mom, my husband, me, and also my uh, my younger son, yeah, three generations of us went to Bahamas together. It was a wonderful, wonderful family. Wow. Mm -hmm. That was a nice trip, yes. yes. Which trip was that? Bahamas. Oh, Bahamas. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the TE trips, yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Oh, well. Anyway, so you've gone through all this. What would you suggest to some of the distributors, you know, what they should look out for and what they should do to become successful in new skin? What are I think the nowadays, yes. I think nowadays new skin has become totally different from, from the new skin that, I, that we joined, right? Um, the, the plan is much more attractive. The products, you know, at that time we didn't have SPAR or we didn't have the age cloud technology. Uh, we didn't have even social media. When I started, I didn't even have mobile phone, okay? So, um, and then we really have to fly to the new markets. We really have to make long distance courses. We really have to stay in those hotels, you know? We have to rent the convention place and et cetera, et cetera. Everything are costs. But right now, everyone with a mobile phone, if you can go up to the Facebook, you can already develop a global business. So why waste time playing games? You know, I, I never play games, no. So why don't we learn something and then and then really seriously develop this? So for me, um, what how I see new skin, how I see new skin, it, it's not a buying and selling business, no. Um, it's, a, it's a lifetime career. Um, and then um, it's an empowering business not just empowering ourselves. The company, our team has empowered us, just like my sponsor, my mentors, they have equipped me. And then, and then right now I have the experience, I have the courage, I have the know-how to also to empower more people. So try to find a meaning in, in why you have joined New Skin. Try to find a meaning in the business. It's definitely not just sales volume, no. If we just look at the sales volume um, every month, uh, it's no fun. It's no fun. Yeah. But if we have, if we look at all the different families, all the people that we have helped, you know, enhance their living standards, uh, that's priceless. Yeah. So mm. find out the meaning in what you are doing. I think then you will enjoy every minute of it. So just like our founder, Mr. Blake Ronnie said. Uh, try to help one person every day. Try to pick up a tool, you know, maybe Pharmanex, maybe age clock, maybe the skincare products, you know, maybe a business opportunity, uh, anything, or maybe just your positive energy. Try to pick up a tool and go and help someone every day. 
So yeah, do it with a with a mission. Mm. Mm -hmm. So establishing establishing your goal in the beginning is very important, isn't it? Yes. Keep an open mind. Establishing yeah. goal, yes. At that time, I only have one goal, that is to become a team lead. You know, um, you guys are. I mean, I mean, all the audience nowadays are really spoiled. Right now, New Skin have incentive <laughs> trips even for the new executives. I'm so envy. <laughs> but oh. in the past, we only have incentive yeah. trips for the team elites, right? Mm -hmm. So every time doing the success seminars, oh, we, we look at all those videos of fun and Hawaii and everything. Only team elite can attend. So my only goal was to become a team elite. <laughs> Wow. And that's that was the trip to Bahamas, right? No, my she first trip was to Fiji. I know, I know, but the first one. Her first, I don't know. Oh, Which Fiji. was your first one? Fiji was the first one. Fiji. Fiji was the first one. Oh, that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> it rained all It seven rained days. all week. <laughs> yeah, but it was it a good one. Three thirty p.m. shop, <laughs> and then it shower, and then like fifteen minutes later, it's all dried up. Yeah, tropical, tropical weather. Yeah. I know. Yeah, but Fiji is a nice place. We went there twice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think being persistent is really important. You know, um, I never expected the new skin journey to be smooth. Yeah, I, I mean, any, anything you want to be successful in, I, I don't think it, it's an easy game. I never thought that way. So, and new skin is a profession. Many people missed out this part. New skin is a profession that we have to learn. We have to learn all the basics. We have to learn all the advanced course. And we have to, and as we lead the team, we really have to en en enhance ourselves. And so that we can, we can lead by example because they are not our employees. You know, we, we cannot order them to do anything and we can only lead by example. And now that I'm opening up my own training center, I'm facing another level of leadership, and it, it's very interesting. I I just found out lately what what true leadership is all about. It's not yeah. doing everything by yourself. No, yeah, I, I'm a slow learner. I learned this after twenty years in music, but leadership is really not doing everything by yourself. No, um, it's really empowering others, letting other people, your teammates, to express their full potential. Um, even though when they don't believe in themselves, you have to believe in them first. Yeah, and then step by step, let them grow, let them express, let them grow, let them express. And at the end, you're just like a director looking at the stage and see them glow. That's what I want to do. Just like you have so many successful teammates out there all over the world. Yeah, well, very well said, Serena. Very well said. Well, anyway. <laughs> That's good. It's good. I mean, to see someone, you know, start from like a blank piece of paper into a true leader. That's very satisfying. I'm yeah. sure you find that satisfying with your team. You know, you've seen your team grow and grow and then start to have leaders you know, and they grow too. I don't think you can do that so easily in a regular business. Yeah, so, and then and then the kind of friendship is totally different. Yeah, the kind of friendship, the kind of bonding. Um, I'm with my partners more than I am. I'm with my family members, to be true. Yes, and uh, especially now that we are running a training center together, um, I see that our bonding has never been stronger. And then we are like building a, a new home together. Yeah. So especially mm. this COVID-19 has really changed the game, has really changed everything. I remember beginning of the year, um, Hong, Kong, Hong Kong was one of the first place to, to get COVID too. So, um, and then me as a leader, at, at that time, I didn't have my own training center, but I was leading my team by myself at that time. Uh, even though I have mentors up there, but I, I was working quite independently with my own home team. So at that time, I thought, 
we really have to change our business model. We, we have to go online. Uh, what is Zoom? So I, I called up uh, Benny Lao Su. I said, Benny Lao Su, um, how to conduct Zoom meetings? He said, okay, come, come to my office and my, 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 um, my staff will teach you. So I went to long benefits and then learned from step to step. Oh, okay, that's not that hard. So, and then, and then I tried to subscribe to Zoom and then started it. But at that time, my, some of my partners, some of my leaders, my, my, my downline leaders told me, Serena, don't ask me to share online. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but regardless, we, we have to do that. So, um, I mean, as a leader, we, we just have to know where we should go and be decisive, be, be persistent, and then try to lead, try to do it myself. Do it once, do it twice, and then they, they see, the, they see the, the way I do it. So they start doing it. And right now they can pick up any Zoom meeting very easily. So, and then we got connected with uh, Pat and Margaret Lao Su. Yeah. And then um, we, we feel so happy to be connected with you and also with uh, Mrs. Brian Waters and Benny Lao Su, uh, Aaron Lao Su. So all of these big leaders, uh, because of the Zoom meeting, um, we can get all the resources from all of you. So at the end, we decided to open up our own training center because my, my style of leadership is quite open. So I want to learn from all the successful leaders. Yeah. Oh. And then also have uh, enough capacity for my, for my own team to express themselves. So that's, that's how we lead to having our own training center. And then it's going to be opened up this coming Saturday. It's our grand opening. Oh, wow. Grand opening <laughs> Saturday, huh? Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. sorry we cannot be there. Otherwise, yeah. we'll be there. how much better hope the two of you can be there. Yes. <laughs> That's good. Wow. Just beautiful. I see the background. New bless skin color. And oh, bless the world. <laughs> yeah. We are. Oh, oh. I was wondering what that was. Yeah. We are a force for good to bless the world. Mm. Wow. And this is yeah. a positive sign, right? Mm. Uh huh. Very nice. Wow. Very nice. Our team's name is Sujia Ping An. Bless the world. Bless the world training center. So, um, actually, it's a very strange training center's name, I know. Yeah, and, and um, a couple of friends, a couple of leaders also told me, Serena, you really want to use this name as a training center's name? Do you have any other choices? I said, no, these names have been in my mind for years. Nothing come close. <laughs> so, but, but we're glad that we finally use this name. Everyone, all my partners nowadays, they love it. And once they look at it, they knew where, what is their mission. Yeah, we really yeah. want, we got so blessed in New Skin, you know. Um, I don't look like I just turned 50. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. Last week. yes. And then wow. um, I am free from allergic asthma. You see, after talking for so long, I didn't even cough. So my health was never been better, never been better. I'm so, so grateful to New Skin. And then um, we have such free um, lifestyle, you know, we can work as hard as we want. We can take a break if we want. Yeah, we can work online if we want. We can meet people if we want. You know, we can do locally if we want, or we can go globally if we want. We can do fast if you want. We can do it slowly and gradually if we want. So it's a, such a flexible uh, lifestyle. I like, I like it, yeah. Yeah, well. You started locally, I'm sure, but then I'm sure your your organization now is you know not all limited over. to Hong Kong. <clears throat> all over. Right? All over. It has to be all over. Yes. So that's one thing about New Skin. What was that? Yes. It sounds... mm. Okay. Anyway, anyway. Yeah. Let me see what what were you looking for? You can't for? see no, so oh. there's some sound. Oh, uh, okay. It's okay. All right, uh, let me see what, what other questions you have.
my, I might have mentioned this before. As a corporate business development manager, what do you think of the strong points of new power, your new skin business? How do you compare? That's that's totally different. Yeah, it's a big big comparison. Uh, I was I was joking. I put it in a joking way. You know, if if one if if I became like the richest person in the world, and then my son said, if my son said, "Mom, can you open up a company and let me run?" And then you have to fulfill this, 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 just like New Skin gives us. I would say no. New Skin is too generous. It's too kind. Even my, a mom cannot set up a company like this for my son. No. So um, I think first of all is the relationship between the company and the and the final end users. You know, um, back 25 years ago when I when I worked for my boss, that was. Um, yeah, 25, 26 years ago. And then he said, hey, Serena, can you develop a website for the company? People are doing something like a website, you know, to represent the company. Okay, so I learned what is website and then hired a um, um, design house to do it. So every, one, every day to check the email, it was me, right? So in the past, as a manufacturer back in China, not many people knew about the company, but once it's connected to the internet, oh my gosh, even someone in Africa is asking for the price. So at that time, I knew that this organization chart is going to be flattened. Yeah, at the end, it's going to be just the manufacturer and the end users. Yeah, anything in between is going to be flattened and direct, but I didn't know that it's going to be direct selling. So new skin and also, also think about it, um, innovation. For a company to come up with uh, hot sellers, it's really very, very difficult. You know, If you come up with a bright idea, oh my gosh, even though you got all the patents, it's very costly to, to get the patents, right? There are lots of copycats. Once you show the new products in those exhibitions to the, the trade shows, it's gone. Two months later, everything similar is in the market, you know? Yeah. So it's very difficult to have a long um, product life cycle that once you have put in the RD and then you can sell for several years, no, no way. Yeah, within half a year, it's been copied. Yeah, so the RD cost just dumped into the rubbish bin. So for a traditional company to be, to stay competitive for decades, is really not easy. Yeah, always price competition and then collection of money. Um, and then um, anything can affect the business, like the train walls, right? Mm -hmm. The train walls between the US and, and China, it's, it's bad enough for, for many business owners. It's going to be even worse. I don't know. Yeah, but for new skin, all these headaches are gone. Right? We don't have to think about what, what new products we have to launch tomorrow. New Skin is launching new products like every several months. That, that, it's so exciting. We, we have to keep on learning, learning, learning. Oh, it, this is the, uh, so many different new sciences. I mean, new ingredients about adaptive, oh my goodness, Inter uh, artificial intelligence, big data. New Skin invested so much. To, to be so innovative, to be in the front end of the whole industry. I mean, um, it has, I mean, I don't know. Do we really, if we, if we really want to run the business, do we have to invest everything by ourselves like that? Or we can just partnership with New Skin, a, a big company like New Skin, right? Utilize its business model, utilize its innovation power, utilize the, the, the velocity compensation plan to just market um, and build up our network worldwide. So it's such a big difference. And then I believe that if a company can communicate directly with the end users, know what they want, know what they like, and can supply what they need, oh my gosh, this is, this company is going to be amazingly successful. And besides, all these are not just end users. They became distribu distributors. 
they became the very faithful, um, well, just like me. Uh, yes. they, they put their lifetime career in New Skin. They help spread the world. They help build their own networks. And New Skin is there to support us to be successful, to build our own network. You know, um, someone from New Skin once said, Andrew Fan, we all knew Andrew Fan. He used to be the mm -hmm. uh, CEO of, of China New Skin. He said, we will retire from New Skin because he was an employee, right? We will retire from New Skin. But all of you distributors of New Skin are always with New Skin. So all the, all the networks that we build, we can pass on. You know, so the relationship between the company and its um, distributors, it's a lifelong or generations long uh, relationship. So it's totally different. But in traditional business, you know, today I drink, I drink Coke, tomorrow I drink Pepsi. Just for example, I don't drink soft drinks. <laughs> there's, there's no loyal customer. There is no loyal customer. And the customer has no um, commitment or motivation to help spread the good word. So new skin is totally different. I think every businessman, every business person worth come to new skin to study the business model. It's a very successful model that perhaps I think many, many companies will change. In the future, many companies has to change their business model in order to survive. They with the Facebook, with with the Facebook, they are actually directly communicating with their end users. But how to mobilize the end users? They have to learn from this skill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you brought up a very interesting point. Okay. Assume that you are a CEO, okay, of a company. You build an organization below you, okay, because you have vice presidents and the general managers, whatever, you know, whatever the hierarchy you have, right? <clears throat> and if you, when, you, when, when you retire as a CEO, does your organization move with you? No. It's a full stop. <laughs> it's a full stop. Yeah, you leave that behind, right? Someone else will take over that organization. Here, you build an organization, does it stay with you? Yes, that's a big difference. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, I, mean, I hope I hope people listening in on this or watching this get the point. You build an organization here under New Skin will be yours forever. Yeah. Not someone that comes along. Hey, I'll take it over. You know, you old guy, get up, get out of here. You know, you're too old. You you have to retire. No. So that's another, that's another question now that people raise. So why don't you guys retire? You know, yeah, people ask us that. Why but... don't you re guys retire? You know, you're, you're doing so, 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 so well. <laughs> yeah, so you guys are in the 70s. Why are you still working? The answer is we are not working, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you call this working? <laughs> right? Yeah. We're having. We're enjoying this, sharing this information. Yeah. Uh, much better than, you know, in the corporate world, you know, you're trying to com compete and try to elbow other people's out so you can get a promotion. And yeah. the higher up you the higher up you go, the more difficult, the more the no fierce the, the com competition will be. Here, you become, you grow your organization, great for you. You don't have to worry about competition. No one's going to compete with you. That's right. Right? Exactly. So go ahead. Do you have any other yeah. good point? <laughs> yes, we, can good. See, we can see from what uh, Pat and Margaret, they, what, what they have done. You know, uh, I, mean, I mean, believe in what we see. We really have to believe in what we see. So every time when people ask me, what, what, what is your, um, what, um, um, what are what are the true secrets? I think I think just believe in believe in what you see. All the successful people, what they what they the the um, what do you thought? Um, why they choose New Skin? You know, Dr. Pat Sung, he has two PhDs. 
you know, one in chemistry and one in law, you know, and Margaret also has a very successful career in the US Air, you know, they are highly qualified. So all these successful people are in New Skin. In fact, New Skin has more than 60% of New Skin distributors are college graduates, the highest in among 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 all the other companies in New Skin, yeah. uh, in, in, in direct selling. Yeah. And also when we when we okay, if you think, okay, so direct selling is one of the choices. Uh, so I can look for other companies. Well, first of all, I think to join a direct selling company, you really have to compare very carefully. Uh, first of all, it has to be a member of the direct selling association. In Hong Kong, there are only nine companies that's qualified to be in that association. So any other company which are not even being listed, not even qualified to be a, a member of the direct selling association, don't even join it because, because if you join, if, if, let's say, after I join New Skin, I want to build something that I can pass on to my to my sons and daughters, or even my grandsons and granddaughters, right? So I want I need a, a a platform which is very strong, a company that can last for a century or two centuries, you know. So I think I think choose very carefully, and even choose the best company is is so important. And New Skin is right now also the uh, uh, President Ryan is the um, chairman of the World Federation of Direct Selling Association. Mm. Yes. Association as well. Yeah. Mm. So why is that? You have to find out why is that. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Now, uh, well, I'm going to come, go, getting to the end of my list almost. Well, what has Newskin brought you that's most satisfying? Most satisfying, um, I think, is personal growth. Um, New Skin, as I said, is a profession. Uh, this profession is limitless, is um, geographically limitless. So that means after you have acquired this profession, if you want to move to anywhere in the world, you can utilize this profession. Can you believe it? So it's the kind of uh, the sense of security sense of security that that you got from here not not just financial wise is um you know what we learn from new skin is how to keep one healthy you know how to keep one to be young um how to be anti-aging um and then how to build from zero to have your own group and then have this passive income so actually every living person they need this they need this, you know. Maybe you are talking to the the owner of a of a big corporation of a listed company, but maybe he is in in poor health. You know, he is successful in the business, but he didn't know how to anti age himself. Yeah, how to age lock himself. So the profession, <laughs> the knowledge that we know, we get from New Skin is priceless. Yeah, wherever you go, you have this profession, you are safe. Yeah. So I think I think. This kind of um, self confidence is really very satisfying to me, and to be able to be very friendly, you know, um, when we walk out there, we are more open minded, you know, our, our hearts are bigger. Uh, we can talk to any good person out there. We can make friends easily. So um, I, I like that. I like that. In the past, I was too busy to look around. I was just by myself, you know just too, too busy doing my own thing. So I have a very small social group, but right now I have friends everywhere. I like that. That's, that's a good thing to have, isn't it? Friends everywhere. Yeah, that's, that's excellent. Well, I have asked everybody on, who came on our interview this question. What would happen if you didn't have new skin? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, I would still be a very hardworking person elsewhere, you know, but my destiny, especially in this COVID world, um, will be very uncertain, right? Um, with the kind of hardworking that I have, I think I, I could be, I could be 
right there among among the top i'm confident with that but for someone to be at that point it's most dangerous because the salary was a bit will be high you know and then the company didn't have good business so the first person that they want to get rid of is those million dollar one the that's how safe is. you are <laughs> that's right that's right the that's high true. up you are the more vulnerable you are yes but but think of it um at this time of our life we are still paying for our mortgage we have children to raise right we have parents we still have big commitments so think about it if we do not have a plan b in our lives if we do not have a financial um security network uh, a net, a financial security net underneath. Whatever happened to our health, whatever happened to our industry, whatever happened to our company, whatever happened to your boss, whatever happened to your family member, you know, that you need, we need the time to be with them. Do we have a choice or not? Yeah. So I think it's very, very important to have a plan B. Um, maybe your career now is good, your business now is good. Okay, congratulations, but at the same time, please have a plan B. So if you have Ferrari on a highway, if you don't even have a spare tire, just a pin on a small rock on the highway is going to blow up the whole thing. Yeah. You just sit there on the highway, even though you have Ferrari. So please be a, have a spare, spare tire. Yeah, well said, Serena. Gee. You're really becoming a great leader. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, learn from you. I learn from you. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay. Uh, what are, you have some words of wisdom from newcomers? Um, well, I started New Skin when I was in my 20s. So for all the young people, uh, I just read from Hong Kong's newspaper, 55% of the young people they found it very difficult to find a job this year. Yeah, so uh, for, for me, to all these young people first, I mean, stay positive. There are lots of opportunities out there. If you have a mobile phone that can connect with the internet, you are already a very influential people. You can be very influential. So, I mean, um, with New Skin, you know, right now, lots of young people have come into New Skin. So um, yeah. it, it's a great opportunity, especially for young people. I mean, for young people, don't, don't, put a, don't give yourself such a, a big pressure that you have to you know, commit yourself for the lifelong. No, no, no. Maybe you, you can just think it as a, well, I don't have to risk anything, but I can learn how to build my team, how to build my career, how to build my own business, global business. I can learn from this platform and I have got nothing to lose, right? So this is for young people. Start from learning first. Um, and then um, for those mother, for those mothers, um, yeah, they are very committed. Some of them, even though they're professionals, since once they have kids, they gave up the professional the professions and be with their kids. Um, I highly admire them. Um, this kind of sacrificing is, um, it's, it's, um, it's amazing. It's mother's love. I knew it. But for me, um, to all these wonderful mothers is that don't lose yourself. While raising your kids, don't lose yourself. Still embrace to your own dreams and you can still have your own life. Um, and be prepared, kids will grow up so fast and they will leave you, right? They can study abroad, they will, you know, move out, they will have, your, have their own life. But at that time, you are already 15 or 20 years older and then you're disconnected with the, with the society. So what are you going to do after that? So stay connected, have your own, have your own life, yes, while raising the kids. And then, um, to all the to all the you know successful people out there, you know struggling in the corporate ladders, etc. There are choices out there. You don't have to be um, so scared of well, am I going to be laid off tomorrow, or what's going to happen to me next year? Uh, feeling so so 
having so much pressure on yourself. There are other ways. There are other ways. So um, don't give up. Yeah, be open-minded. Yeah, I have seen lots of people who are very high rank, very high pressured, but they can transit really well and have a free life in New Zealand. And then for people who has retired, please, 60 something, 70 something, or even 80 something is still very young nowadays. So don't just sit there and don't just say, I'm too old to do anything. So what are you waiting for? You know, life is a gift. Every, every day is a gift. Why don't you just, you know, preciouslessly, um, without any pressure, you can talk to people, you can learn something, you can do something, you can help someone. You, you, you can still create your own income. You can go to your incentive trips. You know, you can have your awards. Why not go for your dreams? So I encourage everyone to join us. <laughs> Thank you. Very Thank good. you. Very good, Serena. Yeah. Excellent. Mm. Wow. Good story. Yeah. Okay. Any, let me, let me see if anybody has any questions. Yeah, let's open up for questions. Okay. Any questions or comments, whatever? No. Yeah. Oh, grow happy in this business. <laughs> Yeah. And thank you so much, Helen and Margaret, for this platform. I think it, it has really connected us together uh, with the spa workshop also, and then with the weekly interview like this, we can learn from all the leaders. I, I, I really treasure this. And then and then there's one thing. Uh, if, uh, because the New Skins culture is so good, you know, it, New Skins culture is really excellent. Helping each other, supporting each other, is a force for good culture. So within a company, if even the distributors, they can help each other, even the sidelines, they can work together. Oh my gosh, this company is going to go a long way. Yes. Thank you. That's, that I think is the best part. If we all work together as a team, you know, then it is a, not even a win-win, it's a win-win, double, triple. You for know. everybody, it's a win for everybody. Yeah, exponentially, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, so no the, the world doesn't have to be like like competition, like we have to step on others in order to get up. No, we can all win together. The mark, the global market is too big, and there are too many people. Right now, only 1.5 million distributors we have in New Zealand. Right, only 1.5 million. That's too little. So we still have a long way to go. So it's the best time to join. Yes, best time to join. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So thank you so much, my dear. Yeah, that is really good. So actually, oh, we already talked for over over an hour. <laughs> I know. It's like we plan we plan for you know half an hour, forty five minutes, but it's always more than an hour. This is perfect. So thank you so much, Serena. Thank you. Stop yeah. the I yeah. enjoyed I'm talking with you. Thank you. And thank you for setting up such a good example for us because of your success.